for a particular champion that they always seem to bring out. Yeah, so um, back when I, I was, uh, I casted their OUC games and stuff, and uh, one of their junglers at that time was Mincam, and he loved playing Hecarim. And even last week, uh, they pulled out the same pick, and they have been doing this over, I think it's been a couple of years now, where they do love to default to that pick of Hecarim. Uh, another key pick for them, obviously, would be the, the LeBlanc, right? He's got it in his name, Distortion. Uh, so definitely watch out for those two picks and see if AC, AC was, you know, caught onto that and banned away the LeBlanc or something here. But for the time being, we do have the Lux and the Lulu banned away from UNSW, and we have the Olaf banned away from ACU at the moment. So what do you think about that? Well, the Lux banned away is probably the, the interesting one here. Yeah. There is, you're talking about the Hecarim, he gets left away nice and early. <laughs> um, the, I do want to focus though on the Lux ban because yes. Lux bottom lane has been poking her head up quite a little bit. Now, uh, typically, it is seen in the form of the Luxona. Um, on the A stream, um, just before now, we did get to see, I believe it was Lux and Ziggs played. And arguably, right now, um, ACU has one of the strongest looking Lux Sona bot lanes in this tournament. So I love to see the banner where you say, okay, you can grab the Sona, go for it, but it ain't nearly as valuable. So I really, it shows that these teams are coming into this with a clear, clear game plan of, okay, they're good at this, let's get it off the table nice and early. Yeah, uh, the Jin ban does indicate to me an, an Ash first pick. Uh, it is seen as a counter to it, and there it is. It gets locked in. Uh, <laughs> almost, I, I mean, it's picked in, but I assume it's going to get locked in here. Uh, I'm interested to see what the ACU response will be, because yeah, you're right. With, without the Luxona, which is what they've defaulted to a lot of the times, Ash can be a, a huge lane bully. Mm. And my your first instincts would typically be the likes of the Caitlyn, except that she's already on the ban list. So. I wonder if they're going to maybe look for something along the lines of Senna. She's been poking, you know, Glacial Augment Senna has been starting to uh, arise a little bit in popularity nowadays. So I'm very interested to see that. But speaking of popularity, I was going to say yeah. another super popular champion is the Shen in top lane is super dominant and super annoying to deal with. Yeah, and, and the Karma as well. Uh, Karma is something you usually pair up with a with the likes of uh, like Graves being hovered here and also the Ash. So... Definitely a very, I think the Karma pick here is more of a take away from uh, the Don Wu or maybe even Distortion because it can be flexed to those roles uh, instead of being something that and uh, Edna Design is more comfortable. Edna Design? I believe he's named after the Enzyme. Yeah, he is. So pretty cool name. Uh, <laughs> sorry, going off a bit of a tangent there. But yeah, that's a good takeaway. The Graves lock in, uh, I do like it. It's a very strong pick in the current meta. Uh, is able to farm up quite quickly and is able to poke and do damage from range, uh, pair that with an Ash, and you have a pretty annoying competition already. Yeah, and they're looking to add into the annoyance a bit more global pressure if Talia does end up being locked in. It would be a bit weird to lock in Talia this early, but I wouldn't put it past them as there it is, decide, you know what, we can take this one blind and immediately answered with the likes of the Vladimir, which does, though, raise one problem worry for me, which is from the side of ACU, you're Marksman player is now going to have his champion pool squeezed even more than he already is. He's lost the Jin. There is no Caitlyn on the board. I don't expect Senna to make it through the bans. Ezreal's probably going to get slapped away too. You're kind of running out of champions um, that are considered, you know, high level from the side of ACU right now. Yeah, and uh, the interesting thing also uh, is that both teams chose to, like, they forego their flex options. Uh, they could have taken the Talia instead of the Graves and picked up a stable support on blue side. And on the flip side, obviously, they could have taken the Vladimir, which is more of a flex champion than the Shen. But they sort of revealed their cards already, which gives, yeah, ACU a pretty simple Morgana ban right there, which is a good pair up. And now uh, on the side of UNSW, they can start focusing out the players that they consider threats. So obviously, the Nunu being banned out. Uh, I think Nunu famously for ACU has been a mid pick. Uh, I think they've been playing it mid a couple of times. Hansi Boy definitely showcasing that. But Thresh yeah. taken away from the Don Wu, yeah. Yeah, we're in the research of this team. We're looking, okay, what does New South Wales, what does um, UNSW do really, really well? And one of the notes highlighted is Don plus Thresh equal carry. So to see that taken away makes a lot of sense there. Yep. Um, the final ban coming through here from the side of there is another jungle focus ban. They're really not worried about Tegan and what it's going to bring to the table. Because even if you play something safe like an Ezreal, they're confident that Aviator is going to be able to go ham and pick up those kills. Yeah, and I think it also unlocks uh, Yulusi to, or Yulossi, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say the name, but he does unlock him to be more of a carry threat when he doesn't have 
as much uh, threat coming in from the jungle in the likes of a uh, Nunu or the Jarvan, I suppose. Uh, Misfortune does get locked in. Bit of an archaic pick, but it still does its job. It's still an AD carry. It still outputs uh, damage. But is it enough, do you reckon, from the side of ACU? Personally, no. I really think that Misfortune is out of place here. Um, I would have loved to see the Senna. I think Senna would be, yes, not ideal, because Ash can have quite a good time in that lane matchup. But if you're going to not lock in the likes of the Senna, you have to lock in something mobile like a Lucian um, or even the Ezreal here. So yeah. we'll see if Tegan can dodge the Enchanted Crystal Arrows or the Blops coming out of the Bard there because the Bard coming through, I'm. There's no way. If they lock in an Ornith, that's such fun. This is such a fun composition, but it's going to be so out of place. I reckon the Soraka will be even more fun, but the Ornith <laughs> does get locked in. Um... The top. And you know, speaking of the Donru, uh, we talked about his Thresh, which is uh, historically a playmaking champion. Bard definitely can uh, make plays um, in the same capacity as a Thresh. He does tend to roam a lot more though, and Aviator is highlighted as one of the carry players. For UNSW, he does go for those extra kills. He, he does he does flash oh in aggressively God. as a, wow, as a, yeah, that's a, that's a pick right there from a tire on okay. the side of ACU. Uh, it is... Giga Brain, and he hear me out. Here's the explanation of the Master Yi. Uh, that's it. Master Yi's biggest counter is hard lockdown. Point yep. and click crowd control that stops him from being allowed to move. UNSW yeah. doesn't really have that. They've got the CC from the Orn, which is far from point and click. You've got the oh god, I hope he you know gets caught by the seismic shove from Talia, which shouldn't be happening. And then your best hope to stop a Master Yi is an Ash Bard, which yes, they can do it. But they don't want to be wasting their time throwing CC at a Master Yi. So I kind of love it. It's risky as all hell. And if it fails, it's going to fail catastrophically. Because unfortunately, Master Yi is very Feast of Famine. But I adore what ACU are going for here. Uh, speaking of which as well, they I think they are flexing it a little bit. I think it does look like Curator will be on that um, Ignite Smite Master Yi jungle. With um, Shen being on Eden Assign as... Yeah, we have a little bit of a pause here, but uh, yeah, as uh, I think Shen is going to be on Edinazan, which we thought was going to be their support player. So they do, they have flexed the, uh, flex the picks around a little bit right there. Very interested to see the impact. It's I, I just can't get over this Master Yi man, because Master okay, so Master Yi early game isn't exactly the strongest thing on the books. So they're going to need to protect and cultivate at early. So they can't have to be careful with the early game. If they get invaded, they can have. To, oh man, this this Marzi has thrown me. I was not. I was like, I was just thinking something like, not maybe a Nunu, but something like a Sejuani, maybe an aggressively sin. Like, nah, fam, we go in late game with the Yi. Um, and he does have the he does have the support to back him up. He does have the Karma, which uh, pairs mm. extremely well with an AD jungler. He also has the Shen, where if he does get caught out by a stray Ash Arrow or something along those lines, if he's not able to Counter Strike it. He does have those two like backup tools, and uh, yeah, in this case, the AD carry really doesn't uh, matter. So, yeah, that's a pretty uh, uh, giga brain pick, I suppose, coming uh, out from ACU. And if it can, if they can make this work, I believe this will be this will be their second win if they do uh, make it work. And UNSW is also gunning for their oh sorry, ACU have won two games, lost one. UNSW have got one win, two losses. So, yeah, both teams really looking to. Uh, climb up in those rankings at the moment and maybe master Yi is the pick to do it yeah i mean on the back of a master Yi shen combo coming out of acu that would be a hell of a way to kick open the door because then you've got to spend every game if you're facing up against likes of acu being paranoid asking yourself the question oh, okay have we got enough point to cow control to deal with the likes of a master Yi? and what i kind of love and I, in hindsight you notice I'm pretty sure ACU's first ban was a Lulu, who is yeah. the counter to Master Yi because of the polymorph. So ACU came in here with the simple idea of, okay, we are getting ourselves um, the Master Yi, and nothing is going to stop us. Okay. Oh, well, we just... <laughs> I love the composition. It's weird, it's wacky. That is exactly what I want to be seeing on the side of ACU. So we can see the first game of the night here. ACU aiming to go three. Big kids upstairs when it comes to the scoreline. 
While up against them, of course, the University of New South Wales does want to fight back, trying to stabilize the scoreline, bring their game score to a piece here. And game number one of the night, better kick off. Early game shenanigans boosted. I do have to ask you, do you think we'll be getting any? I certainly hope so. Uh, the comps like this usually do love to uh, invade early, but uh, and it does look like ACU want to invade. They are grouping up as four right now. And they're looking for a little bit of vision or maybe even a kill right now. Graves is sitting in that bush, so we'll see if anything happens out of this. As ooh. Nah, Don't I guess get nothing out of peace. There's no... <laughs> Imagine getting caught up like a master year in the early game. I, by I swear like the first minute of the game. In the, these games, the first minute's always so tense. You know, you gotta get your, you gotta get ready for anything. It, it, anything can happen in uh, games like this. And uh, yeah, I was mentioning this before we went into the... Um, we went into the three minute delay for the game, obviously. The fl the flex picks, right? Like you can see on the screen, Edna Zion was their last pick, actually. And Attire was, uh, we thought Attire was going to be the jungler, but he's actually gone, I, I believe he's gone support. And uh, Curator is actually pulling out the um, Ignite uh, Ignite Smite Master E with Conqueror, of all mm -hmm. things. That's actually really interesting to me as well. Yeah. I mean, Ignite Smite is a bit more standard nowadays, how we're seeing it on even their opponents here in the Graves, as Orsi has grabbed himself Ignite Smite. Um, but yeah, Gage, the Conqueror's a little bit odd, because typically, um, maybe it's just personal, I really love the Hail of Blades on yeah. the Master Yi. You really get those attack, you know, the attack speed going. Um, I know Lethal Tempo is also quite preferable, as we're seeing some sort of, you know, Bard you know, loving to start fighting the bottom lane. But Conqueror does say that he's looking for more, more of an Ended fight, which when you look at Bard, you look at Ash, you look at Orm, be like, yeah, the fight probably isn't going to end as quickly as you want it to. You can see both uh, both bot lanes here actually vying for a control because they understand that junglers are probably going to be bot side and they want to protect against an invade from the likes of the Graves. Uh, Musty not really known for his invade capabilities, but definitely can do it. Uh, quite quite proficient at it actually, deceptively, especially against something like a Graves, which can. If he uses his dash at the wrong time, Masti is there, boom, that's a free kill, so... With Ignite and stuff, but you can see right now, Yulosi, uh, much faster on his clear, actually, than Curator. He started at the same time of the map, but he's able to finish his camps uh, a lot quicker, which means he's gonna have the higher... He's gonna have the first move on this map at level 4, I believe, is when their clear finishes. Hmm. And that is quite standard for Graves nowadays, it's <clears> why he was such a priority pick for the side of UNSW. Fast clear, aggressive clear, and he's ready to go. Double buffs at three minutes. And you actually see some nice teamwork coming out of the side of UNSW as we see Don's Bard is roaming up and say, hey, Graves is already ready to go. We are more than happy to take this fight here. We'll see who is able to roam down as it's skirmish for the blue buff time. Yeah, Ulofsi does have smite available, so he's still looking for it. Uh, Bard and Bustan is going to miss right there. And uh, Hamzy Boy is going to join the fight. Curator goes in with the Q. Ignite goes popped. But he's getting down very, very low right here. Yulossi also low on the other side. Distortion gets ignited. Uh, pool used by Hamzy Boy and trying to get a kill. It gets first blood. Is ignited. Is going to get traded back by Yulossi. Uh, and it does look like it's going to be the end. Unless they're able to chase down this misfortune. But a very bloody opening to this game. A one for one trade. And ironically almost, it's the two mid laners who were the ones to fall in that fight. And I, in a way, I love the idea of what the UNSW team were going for. Like, okay... Graves has got his jungle done. We wanted to stop the Master Yi from scaling, which is to be, okay, let's just deny him his own jungle. And to a degree, it was successful in that regard, but I don't think they were ready for ATU to actually roam up against them. It looked a bit lost when they realized, oh, wait, you know, Hamnoy's boys, Vladimir, has jumped in over the wall, and oh, God, you know, the rest of the team is roaming up to us. And that's partly because they took so long to invade. Um, Don's Bard poked his nose in, then pulled out, and then he poked his nose back in, and then he had his back up as well. So, maybe a little bit slow of an invade, and is the reason why ACU were able to fight back against the opposite numbers. Yeah, I would say, in terms of summoner spells, ACU does come out ahead right there. Uh, both summoners down for Distortions, Talia, and uh, obviously he lost his graves as well, and uh, the Don Wu's Bard. So, he, they've, they've invested a lot into that invade, and I don't actually know who actually ended up getting the buff. I'm not sure if you caught that, but... Uh... Uh, curator, ironically. No one killed the blue buff, yep. so Curator yeah, so ended up getting his blue. 
Yeah, the curator did end up getting the buff, and that that does mean that it's honestly at this point, honestly, it's like you know, if if uh, ACU is able to utilize the fact that those summoner spells are down, and snowball that into something like a dragon, it becomes a long term victory for them, right? Mm. So, and yeah, I think the good. way they can utilize that is through the bottom lane. Keegan's misfortune, flash and heal are down, and I'm seeing up against them. I'm seeing Ash and Bard. I'm seeing engage, I'm seeing opportunity, and I'm seeing a potential kill down in the bottom lane for UNSW. Hit level six, get your graves to rock up. Um, Enchanted Crystal Arrow, doesn't really matter who. If you get the Misfortune or the Karma, both will die just as easily with the damage output um, your team has available to you. If you want to be cheeky like that, and instead of, instead of that though, looks like they're just gonna force the dragon nice and early. Yeah, so, uh, pretty, yeah, pretty good pathing again from Yulossi, he's been pressing me so far with his graves. Uh, he does path down, recognizes, like, like, probably like you, that the flashes are down on, um, Misfortune, and has his bot lane shoving the wave out quite early in that regard. So, yeah, pretty good, pretty good stuff from Yulossi, and they are going to be rewarded with the first dragon. Yeah, the mountain falls to the side of UNSW here, and... So it's very interesting to see the rest of the objectives, of course, is a Cloud Dragon that's spawning up next, is... <laughs> yeah, I, I hate playing top lane in this meta right now, because all you see is Shen, Orn, Maokai, it's nothing but tanks, it's like, come on, bro! I will say, if uh, the Shen does go into the more um, aggressive route, he can pick up a tier map, uh, which allows him to shove the waves in, Trade some damage back. Titanic Hydra obviously synergizes extremely well with his uh, the way he wants to build and play the game. So uh, I would like to see that out of uh, Edna's sign. And in saying that, look, looking at top lane right now, it, there is actually a bit of a there's a, almost a 20 CS lead for Chubby on this Orn. And if you look at the wave management from him, extremely well done. It is uh, almost pseudo frozen on his side. Um, mm. it, it, I've not actually seen this wave being on Shen's side at all yet. That means he's extremely overextended at all times. So Gra Graves is obviously not being capitalizing on this, but very well done, I think, from the top laner of UNSW so far. Yeah, welcome to the power of Warn. That percentage <laughs> health damage on the Brittle is just so obnoxious, and it's gotten Chubby a 300 gold lead that we can see. So basically, a kill's worth of minions is what yeah. he's sitting on there, which is always welcome from the two top laners. I think, though, the solution to this isn't necessary from the side of uh, ACU is now to get that Shen to be useful. You have Stang United available on him. Make a play on the bottom lane uh, with your Master Yi, or even the mid lane. Make a play somewhere. I don't know where, but somewhere. Because you need to bring the Shen back into it. And it isn't always ganking the Shen's lane. It's <laughs> getting the rest of the map set up around him. Same can be said for the um, Talia, though. I, I would also like to see this Talia uh, kind of get out of the lane against the Vladimir, because right now they're just going even, and that just means if you're going even against the Vladimir, Vladimir is winning. So I would want to see this uh, Talia get out of lane a little bit more. Uh, maybe, you know, use those Ash ulties to maybe even get picks on the Vladimir himself or on the jungler of um, Master Yi, because he does not have flash available to him. So yeah, definitely both, I think both teams can benefit a little bit more from getting out of their lanes a little bit. <clears throat> the, the concern with it though is as much as I want uh, both teams to be you know, looking for fights, for example, I want ACU to be looking for fights in the bottom lane because they have access to the Shen. Um, and I want, you know, University of New South Wales to utilize Distortion Cilia to either go bot lane or top lane. I don't really care which, just get moving. You've got to go see, well, what's the follow-up? What is it going to be in the follow position? So if you look on the side of Distortion, he really can't go top lane because even, even if you do land your combo, the chances of you actually killing a Shen is relatively slim, even if he has gone for the uh, tier map aggressive build that you were talking about. So you kind of have to go bottom lane with Distortion, and then you have to start worrying about, okay, well, if I go bot lane, I have to deal with Shen staying united. I have to deal with um, the disengage that a Karma provides, which can be very obnoxious to try and lock down. So um, as much as like, I want these things to be proactive, I want them to fight. But ironically, the way that they've played their comps, I feel like they're not going to ever fight unless Aviator pulls the trigger or a dragon is a, alive on the map. Yeah, I think this next dragon is going to tell a really important story. Um, 
I do believe units W will go for it. I think uh, they're going to try to use that Warren. And the fact that they won that, on maybe not won that, but they were willing to take that early fight. They will definitely go for it. And I wonder if AC will contest them as oh, a play comes that bar's coming in for the fight. Yeah, so Curator pops his ultimate early, Bard also pops his ult. Curator is going to be able to attack the Bard here. Is maybe able to take him down, but no. The Ignite comes through from the Graves. Is able to take him down with a collateral damage. Flashes fall from Aviator. Picks up the kill onto the Karma. Is looking for Tegan as well. As the camera pans away to mid lane. A little bit of trade coming in onto the Vladimir. But at the end of the day, it's a two for two. Fight set up coming from the side of... Oh, wait a second. Oh. <laughs> yeah, as the Flash comes in from Hamzy Boy. Has the Ignite down with the... Uh, Hema Plague, but it does not look like it's enough damage, did not get the Empowered Q off. The Aviator looking to step forward here, has the W available to him, is not going to be able to chase him down. And, uh, yeah, it just plays all around the map. Okay, so the fight in bottom lane started off super, super, I, I want to say cute almost, from the side of New South Wales, because they got the Bard Portal to come in behind, Curator came in for the flank as well. It was really cute, but really scrappy. I don't, it felt almost like neither team knew that the other one was making a move until they butted heads in the lane, which yeah. can unfortunately uh, result in a lack of vision um, or a lack of really forethought about what's coming on because you know both teams, we've talked about it, will be keeping their eyes on the dragon. It looks like at least the side of University of New South Wales recovered first and will be securing dragon number two. But ACU, they might try and posture for a revenge fight. Yeah, so uh, at the end of the day, even if they trade a two for two, the fact that UNSW do end up getting that drag and put themselves on track for a 20, uh, 20 minute soul does mean that they technically won that engagement because they did they they trade two for two, but they get the uh, they get the dragon on, on the back of it. As Curator looking for another play here, flash used by Chubby quite early is going to keep himself safe. And yeah, like that dragon going over, I think it is a Ocean Soul that comes through. Yep, yeah, it is an Ocean map. So Ocean Soul, if you and SW are able to get it at 20 minutes, it's going to be absolutely massive. Mm. It's going... Because how you... Trying to burn someone like, for example, Chubby Zorn down against a, against a regeneration of an Ocean Soul is going to be near impossible. Seeing the side of NSFW being re really, really clever here. Um, setting up around the bottom side, okay, we're taking the dragon, we know Master Yi is top lane because we saw him attempt to gank our top lane up. We can play, we can force the turrets down here, they're going to get a nice charge off, that is going to be a massive influx of gold given over to the oh. side of UNSW here, you can see it on your screen there. Uh, yes. There is a 1,000 uh, over that now, gold advantage, 2,000, what, 200 gold? Yeah, advantage right in aviator's favor already yeah and we he's like the this is the first big ash this is the this is the guy who is quite aggressive on his team you saw him flash forward in the last fight so yeah if yeah, giving him all the gold is a, you know a winning strategy for unsw and they will take that uh not only did he get the gold but so did the graves who is also one of the range carries on this team definitely not one of those um not like a defense ball kind of like what volley bear and trundle are but he's more of a carry himself so both of those um, players getting the gold is quite important for UNSW, and it's really nice to see that. Yeah. And they're not done just feeding feeding gold over to Avian just yet. They'll send him top lane, kick off the lane swap here. While the, actually, no, top lanes will fall before they can really get a push here, but they're now looking for something onto Shen. Yeah, so Ashara does come out, but doesn't look like there's going to be enough damage to take down Eden Assign on this Shen. Avian is looking forward. Ignite does go down, and the collateral damage will finish him off. And my bad, I guess, that was a lot more damage than I was expecting. But now Curator lying in wait, the Sweeper does get popped. Is not going to end up mattering though, as Curator should be able to pick up this one kill. Uh, Bard is going to get chased down through the magical journey. The Q comes out from Master Yi, is able to take it down, but Aviator is going to probably pick up this kill. No, it does look like it's pretty close, but it does end up going down. Shubby's already teleported up here, is going to use his own horn, is going to use the E, is, uh, Hamzy Boy uses the pool, gets out of it. And at the end of the day, it does look like it's just going to be a 3-4-2 traded in the favor of UNSW as Distortion. Looking to move forward, nice start from Tegan though. And you see the kill come down? Yeah, it's still going. Tegan has the Shen ulti on top of him now. He's stepping forward, but UNSW looking to disengage. The taunt does go onto the Orn. The shield comes down as well from Shen. Uh, the E from Talia does look like it's going to be enough as she does end up going down to the Ludens proc, I believe it was, from Distortion's Q. And at the end of the day, uh, that was a pretty decent trade for UNSW. They don't realize when to just let it go. Yeah, okay, so they lose their top laner because the Shen's gone for a bit more of an offensive-oriented build. As you said, 
He, we can we can see he's got the tier mat. I would assume, I hope he isn't, but I'm going to assume that he is rushing towards a first item, um, Titanic Hydra, as they do get the Yes, he's rushing towards a Titanic Hydra first item, which is great to deal with Chubby Zorn. Not so great to deal with Blade of the Ruin King Ash. So the follow up from NS UNSW, sorry, just crush him down. And then ACU, they think, says, okay, well, we lost the fight, but we can try to turn this around. We've got Shen Ultimate, we've got Bullet Time. Um, but let's play aggressive here without taking into account the fact that you need to pay attention to what the enemy items are. You've got a Blade of the Room King Ash. You've got a Bard that's now picking another fight, apparently. Uh, no time here, as uh, Double Flash does get blown for the bot lane of ACU. I think that was a Bard ultimate that came down. Ulysses is looking for this chase, is going to corral them into this tower, is going to go down to the auto attack from the Graves. Collateral damage comes down, and you know, it's Fortune follows suit. And with the Rift Tower picked up, this should be an easy uh, tower, if not a couple of towers for side of Venus W. Yeah, and that's turret number two. Another influx of gold for the three members on your screen here. Aviator, Don, and Yulossi are benefiting massively from the way they're playing this. It's basically a three-man roaming hit squad. Where these three are, you don't want to be. And ACU, I'm getting a little bit worried now. Because we talk about, okay, it's the Shen and the Master Yi. Master Yi's going to be critical. Hell, Master Yi's got the most CS on his team right now. But they're already starting to crumble. 5,000 gold down already. The Master Yi needs to get that second item, that Wintu's Rage Blade. But they're not going to get the time because it's time for another fight. Yeah, it's not over yet. That pink ward in the back of the pit doesn't get sweeped out. But Master Yi does end up picking up the dragon. Now all uh, hands on deck trying to get away from this fight. But Distortion is going to use his Talia <laughs> ultimate. Get in there quite close. Uh, Curator tries to turn it around but is not able to. Nice knock up coming in from the side of the Orn. And that's going to be... Uh, three kills, another three kills, sorry, going over to the side of units. The Ash Arrow does come out. Onto the Shen, I believe. But it doesn't look like it landed. Sorry, the stream lagged out for me a little bit, but we're Flash back now. Uh, number three down, and that yeah. last fight felt ACU, okay. ACU's pulling the emergency trigger. They said to themselves, okay, we have to get this dragon here. We cannot let them get the third dragon at 17 minutes. We don't want to let, we want to delay soul as much as possible. The issue yeah. is that once they took the dragon, it needed to be a full committal to a disengage. You are 5,000 gold down. You did not have the battle positions or the structure to set up a fight, yet they still committed to the fight. AC, you yeah. need to acknowledge the fact that you, you're not fighting until Marcy now finally has his two items. Now you can start to look for fights. Yeah, for sure. And uh, it's actually amazing that UNSW are even winning these fights as hard as they are because. Remember, the Orn items still have to come in. Uh, we have a Ludens completed on the Talia. I hope she doesn't upgrade the Ludens, but it's quite possibly as Distortion is going to get jumped on here. He's going to use his E. And look at that damage onto Shen right there. It doesn't end up picking up the trade kill, but that was like that damage onto the Shen is indicative of how fed this Talia is. Mm, Talia, quite strong there. Although I don't think it helps um, from Endenson's side when, you know. You decide to dash over Talia's Toblerone minefield. It's basically begging to lose half your HP. Um, so I just need to be a little more careful uh, when he decides to use the Shadow, Shadow Dash Taunt. But AC, this is the openings they need. They can't be looking for these massive 5v5 team fights where Master Yi gets to dive into the back line and look super flashy. You're not at that point. You need to find picks, get not just the Master Yi head, but you need to bring your Vladimir and your misfortune into relevancy because right now your misfortune is sitting 03 and 4. I believe she's sitting on just one item, which is the Essence Reaver. I can't see what she's putting towards next, but she needs to be more relevant for these fights because, yes, Yi is good, but Yi needs setup, Yi needs help. And right now, ACU's the other carries on the team aren't in that position to offer the support that Curator's Master Yi needs if he wants to try the solo carry, you know, cow step style of League of Legends. And the map is really shrinking for this Master Yi, as Talia is going to use the oh, ultimate, no. another pick onto Tegan. This pure and poor misfortune is going to end up being 0 4, but the backup does oh, actually wait, come in from the side of Hamzy Boy, and that does mean distortion does go down. And I think that means that Tegan will live, so that actually is a very good pickup for, ironically, for the side of ACU on a play that distortion started. Yeah, distortion. Bass feeling a bit too confident after last play, and a lack of vision. He saw Tegan on his own and decided, yes, I'm gonna, I see an AD carry here on their own, I can do this. Went in, good decision, 
bar the lack of vision. He had no idea where the rest of the enemy team was, had no idea about the incoming backup, and gets taken down as a result. So, again, I like the idea, but maybe a little bit on the side of overconfident. Yeah, definitely a bit of a solid ass cure. Okay, speaking of which, ACU gonna start off this Baron. It is a Rage Blade Master, Master E with the Ardent Sensor of Harma. So this goes down extremely quickly, and I don't think units definitely have caught on. So this is just gonna be a free Baron for ACU. Um, bravo to them, I suppose. Yeah, very it, well done. It begins. The cheese <laughs> of Yi begins. It's the two yep. items. Is it the Karma with the Ardent Sensor? Almost, like, Arden Center does not help the Misfortune in any, like, it helps a little bit, but not realistically. Um, you would go for, like, the likes of an Athene's Unholy Grail, but he's like, no, no, it is ye time, boys. Um, and with this Baron buff, this is critical. This Baron buff is not the Baron buff that will start breaking open the base. Hell, I don't actually expect ACU to take many of the Tier 1 turrets that um, the University of New South Wales have. This is to act as a stalling tactic to recover the five or four thousand gold that ACU are behind, assuming they don't get caught out. Yeah, Tad does have to blow his flash right there, but I think other than that, it was relatively safe. And yeah, I think this Baron is going to be used as, I, I think you've said it perfectly, stall tactic, and potentially to get this next dragon, which is spawning, uh, I believe quite soon, it's spawning, actually it's spawning in a second, is it? Yeah, no. Sorry, 15 seconds. My bad. I was reading the... I was misreading. I was reading the red buff timer. My bad. And, um, yeah, so and if they can, are able to uh, get priority around this mid lane, able to get some vision control down, they can certainly fight for this with uh, Baron buff. Anyway, they, don't, they want to be more setting up around the side lanes. So, for example, we see Shen topside right now. Although, Curator, he's ready to go. Yes, yeah, sir. So, uh, Vladimir Flash engages right there. Hemoplake onto two people, but the Bard ulti was beautiful, denying the... Uh, uh, Hema played completely, and now Eden is signed in the middle of nowhere. Curator is going to end up going down to the Talia and the Graves combo, and in the back line, I think um, Hamzy Boy went down as well, and now Chubby with Distortion looking to chase down this Misfortune. Has Flash available, is going to utilize Distortion, uses his own Flash, and is a uh, beautifully timed flick coming in from uh, this Talia. Working out really well, and Yunus W win that fight 4, four, four to, I think it was 4 to none. Oh no, 4 to 1, sorry good things to do you had the baron buff to stall out you had so many options you did not have to fight for that dragon it is not soul there is they think okay oh no if you, know, if you and sw get themselves the first of the ocean dragons that is not the end of the world you had baron buff to stall out the side lanes you could look for a one three one you could look for you know putting shot on the side lane and ambushing with the marcy you had so many options and they decided to roll the dice, and the card that, you know, the dice side that came up was Master Yi charges 1v3. Yeah, you this need... is where... Oh. Sorry. This is, this is where the lack of uh, clear engage from ACU is kind of hurting. We saw Hamzy Boy flash in, got a beautiful two-man or three-man Hema Plague. Uh, the Bard was able to deny that perfectly, and if they had an engaged champion, maybe something along the lines of, a, you know, like a Nautilus or Leona, something along those lines, instead of perhaps a Karma, that would have helped, I feel, like a lot mm. more in this situation because that's ac that's actually what's happening between these fights where uh, you have this Vladimir Flash engaging from the front, like, come on team, let's go, but then there's no follow-up because they can't, like, the rest of their engage is, you know, shentaunt. So they, they don't have uh, too much engage and that makes it very difficult for ACU to follow up on Hamty Boy's ham engages, let's call them, uh, on the Vladimir. Engages, as much as it, as much as it sounds like that, that's like what it is. You've got Master Yi having to charge face first at the problem. You've got, as you said, the... Oh, oh wait a second. Okay, we're going to the second. Two star player will fire. Out of the frying pan into fire, and it's going to be the death for uh, Atayo a a tire right there. He's going to end up going down. Asher is down, so that mean MF does mean remain relatively safe. Very nice sidestep coming up from her. She didn't have the flash, so she does go down, and that's going to be an inhibitor taken for Eunice W. Mid inhibitor down, uh, that means that they can now start setting up around this bot lane or top lane towers or even set up for this Baron. The world is really their oyster right now. It really is because the way you stop this on the side of ACU is you get picks or you start a team fight. Now, we know, as we've said quite a few times, that ACU have not drafted a composition that is going to be capable of effectively starting team fights. Uh, beyond the likes of a, a taunt from Shen, which is just not what you should be doing. 
Um, so their best hope here is to look for picks, which, they, again, they haven't really drafted a composition based around finding picks. They haven't got something like the Death Sentence uh, from mm -hmm. the likes of a Thresh. They haven't... A brilliant example is the Ash that we see in the hands of Aviator. Brilliant to catching people out of position. Even now with this, you know, it's almost a 10,000 gold. It's about 8k right now, 9k I should say. And that means that are you actually going to be able to pick off the Orn in the side lane? Or are you even actually going to be able to pick off the Talia if the Master Yi is not there, right? So if um, even if um, units W are catching waves in the side lane or looking to do a little bit of 1-4 or 1-3-1s themselves, does ACU have the resources to catch them out? Yeah. They, in a way, they do. If a member from UNSW overextends, um, even if it is the likes of the Orn who's pretty damn tanky, uh, the damage that ACU can dish out to a single target um, that's on their own and they have, you know, a solid of five seconds to do so is quite significant. Master Yi is still pretty damn forced to be feared. The Misfortune, yes, she's been quite, you know, Tegan's been struggling on the Misfortune this game, but it is still able to do a decent quantity of damage. And Vladimir is gone for a bit more of a teamfight based build with the Death Cap as well as the Hex Tech uh, Proto Belt. But it is still capable of slamming a person down if they're given the time to just free hit on someone. One um, thing I would like to say, um, sorry, to, sorry to cut off the okay. point, but I, I really, it's really egregious. I, I hate it when teams do this. They draft on and then they don't build on items. Why <laughs> do you not build on items? Graves, the opportunity for a black cleaver is right there. Um, as the oh, arrow does time. come out, as they're talking on, uh, on into it, it's going to be the death for Tyre. Uh, Vladimir going back in really ham into the back lines. Is going to use the Zonya's distortion. Uh, may get popped for her damage right there, but the Master E goes down immediately in the front lines uh, through the Shen ulti as well. And Shen's, uh, sorry, Tegan's going to get chased down. Distortion's going to ulti over, but I think that's just going to be the end of the game for UNSW right there. Well, all items or no all items? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter whether you have all items or not, they will be able to end the game here. They saw the picks, they got ahead early, and unfortunately, a few drafting errors coming in from the side of ACU have punished them quite brutally to the point where we will have the University of New South Wales winning in 27 minutes. Yeah, uh, very dominating performance coming in for you.